Hi, this is Shane R. Monroe, and you're back with me with another mystery loot box dig from Shane's Shed. I've got it right here. It's filled with, could be treasures, could be trash, you just don't know. If you watched my last video, we found some pretty cool stuff in there. What will we find in this box? Let's just jump in and find out, shall we? We'll do it together. All right, so I'm just going to start reaching in here. Ah, this is my Samsung Gear Sport Watch. I don't, know, I don't even know if I need to open this thing. Never know what's in here, though. Sometimes there's leftover power adapters or other interesting things. Uh, not much left in here. Hey, look at this. It's a replacement watch band. That's kind of cool. Why is there only part of it, though? Where's the other part? Hmm. Maybe only one part's attached to the actual watch itself. I don't know. But, hey, listen, sometimes you, I, I don't know why I keep the boxes for everything. Resale value, who knows? I never resell them in the box. So what do we got here? This is, um, oh, hey, this is Zombies in Spaceland. This is the, the uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare game. This was, um, this is a vinyl thing, only at Target. I was really big into this, and I never really did anything with this. This is kind of cool. This is, um... It's kind of like it's that. It's uh, really bent. But it's uh, it's kind of like um, I mean, this is the bad guy at the end. This is like the main boss of Zombies in Spaceland. But there's no uh, David Hasselhoff. There's no Willard Wyler on here. So I, that's probably why I never did anything with it because it still says Zombies in Spaceland, but it kind of feels like one of those unauthorized reproductions, right? Keyboard. Okay. Just a keyboard. Let's see what we got here. So AA batteries. Ooh. Triple A batteries. I probably shouldn't have those in there. Get rid of those. We don't want any leakage. So why do I have this? What makes this special? It's wireless. Hmm. Maybe it's just an old keyboard you wanted to keep? I don't know. I thought maybe it was Bluetooth or something, but I don't see any Bluetooth items on here. So it probably needed a dongle, which was probably well, maybe not in there. I don't know. It's a keyboard. Nothing exciting. Couple of dead batteries too. What's this? Cables. I have a weird feeling it's gonna be a cable box. This is SATA cable for hard drives. Ah, a book. 50 great horror stories. Yeah, okay, so there's this good story behind this book. So back when I was a kid, I read this book called 50 Great Horror Stories, and it came in a paperback and it had this skeleton dude in a robe, and under the robe he had this woman's head, this discombobulated head. It was all creepy. It was really a cool looking cover. And of course there were 50 stories of horror in there. And so I spent a lot of time trying to chase that book down. I could never find the original book. Did you know there's like a million 50 great horror story books out there? They all have the same exact name. So the only thing I could do was to try to find ones that had the same stories in them. And there's a couple of great ones. So one of the ones I remember specifically was... Um, uh, one where this uh, kid had, went, had gone by this woman's house and saw her actually take her own head off and brush her hair. It was really creepy. And the woman found out that he knew. Turned out the woman was a witch and she wanted to have she wanted to kill him. She was going to come and kill him in the middle of the night. And so he went to some priest or something. The priest said he had to encircle himself with salt and he had to say these incantations or the witch would get him. It was really cool. I can't find that story anywhere. Not in this book, and I can't even remember. Maybe it wasn't in the 50 Great Horror Stories at all. But there's some great stories in here. One of them is called A Date with a Spider. This was one crazy story. So it's about this little hostel that this young couple was running. And uh, they had this little boy running around. This was like in some backwater South American town or something. But um, their guests kept dying. They'd wake up in the middle. They'd wake up. Well, they wouldn't wake up because they were dead. But the next morning, they would go into these people's rooms and the people would be dead. They looked like they'd been poisoned, right? Well, some of them had some money on them that can't turned up missing. And so the local constable came by and they thought that this poor young couple was were poisoning their customers and stealing their money. Well, it turns out there's this big giant spider living up in the attic. I mean, the size of a plate, they said. A, a, a pakuza or something like that. Anyway, it was the size of a plate. And in the middle of the night, these things, this spider would come down and kill the guests. But it turns out the little boy was upstairs feeding the thing. Grasshoppers and ants and all this other stuff. And so the they arrest the guy, the, the guy and his the guy and his wife, they arrest the guy, the husband, and they take him downtown. The grandfather says, Well, I'm gonna sleep in the bed. And maybe if I die, they'll the, your husband will be free because 
he couldn't have killed him because if I'm dead, then he didn't do it. Well, of course, you know, there's a whole big thing and the, he catches the spider and he chops the spider in the half and the little kid says he's been feeding the spider. The parents and the grandparents freak out. It's terrible. But there's another great book, uh, another great story here called The Attic Room. And this was about uh, these uh, college kids who tricked one of their friends into staying in this haunted room that they had where some maid had been raped and murdered up there. And the ghost is supposed to come back every so often. I don't believe in ghosts, so I'll go stay up in the room. Well, they rig up the room with electronics and speakers, and they totally wig this guy out, right? They freak him out. He has to pay his bet, because he bet like 50 bucks that, they, that he wouldn't leave, and he left, of course. And so later on, they meet later on for a drink, a bunch of different years later, and it turns out that this guy has snapped. He's never been the same since that ghost thing, and he jumps up and he kills one of the dudes that played the trick on him. Good stories. You know, there's a, there's a bunch of other ones in here, but uh, so that's why I have this book. It's the hardback version of, uh, I think, the soft cover version I had. Great story. Great stories in there. What else we got? Uh, let's see. We got uh, Ethernet cable. Boring. A Game Boy Advance manual for a Ms. Pac Man maze madness. Look at this. But hey, maybe it's worth something. This Ms. Pac Man, so probably not. Now, this. This is awesome. This is a Sega Dreamcast game. It's called Ooga Booga. Why do I have a game for Dreamcast called Ooga Booga? Right? Well, take a look. First of all, it is a cool cover, right? And if you look at the back, you can see some of the graphics. Actually, pretty decent graphics. And some of the other stuff. This game is special to me. Uh, this scene, you know, this seen a lot of action. Wow, the disc is in good shape. Maybe this isn't the original disc. Maybe this is the one I bought. But anyway, this game... Don't you love physical media? It comes with these cool booklets and, I don't know, there's just something special about something you can hold on to and not something you download and erase the next day. But Ooga Booga was played by my two daughters. Um, they were younger. And this was their favorite player versus player game. They would be very, very competitive with this. And uh, my daughter, my older daughter, called, a, called the player a polar boar. I was like, what are you talking about? A polar, po polar bear? You're talking about a polar bear? But if you see, you're riding on the back of a boar. And one of the games is called, like, uh, Polar something or another. So she called it Polar Boar. It was so great. So anyway, so this um, this game actually means something to me and my family. And uh, it's got a rich history in my household. So that's what I got. Uh, more cables. Uh, power supply. I don't know what that's to do. Hey, now, this is something cool, though. This is actually something fairly unique. So you know how it is, right? You have a million devices that all need a different power supply, and you don't have the right. You don't have the right one with the tip. The voltage isn't right. You lose your mind. You end up having a box filled with this crap sometime later on, and you don't know what any of these are to. Well, this was sort of an attempt to solve everybody's problem. So not only, and you've seen universal adapters, right, where you can take the tip off and you can change it with a smaller one or a different type of tip. Nothing special there. Um, and you could reverse the polarity by putting it in backwards or whatever. That, that, that's no big deal. Those have been around forever. And usually on the little thing, there's a little slider that lets you set the voltage. Yeah. Well, this used something totally different. I thought this was really kind of cool and unique and it's worth talking about. This voltage that comes out of this thing is actually set by this little tiny crystal. It's a little Superman power crystal here. So here it is. I just pulled it right out. So here it is. This is the, this is the crystal. It's a little piece of crystal with two little prongs on it. And right on the side of it, it says 5V, 5 volts. And so somewhere in one of these boxes is the rest of this kit that has a dozen of these little tiny crystals that all you do is you plug it in and it changes the voltage from whatever it is. You just plug it in there and now you've got a different voltage. So this, this could tip it, could, could, could take a, take, replace all of your power adapters. But for some reason, I didn't end up using it as much as I thought. And the rest of the kit is around here somewhere. Oh, hey, this is fun. I haven't seen this in a long time. This is, um, this is a 15-watt solar charger. All right, so you open it up, and oh, here are the solar panels. So there's actually solar panels in here. And if you look inside of here, there is a couple of USB plugs. So, of course, the idea here is, is that you're out camping, maybe at the beach, right? Your cell phone is crying for power. You need something for your MP3 player, whatever. Open this guy up, plug your cell phone in here, and it charges. But 
it charges really slow. So if the zombie apocalypse comes, you'll want one of these. Otherwise, you'll want to put it right back in the box. More uh, USB extender cable. I have a feeling of what the title of this video is going to be called. Cable Box. Cable Box. Well, I see other stuff in there, too. So what do we got here? This is... This is unusual. Let's see what we got here. Uh, there's a little button. And... What a weird symbol. Plug. Yeah, it is a weird... That must be a... That doesn't remind me of anything. So this is... Looks like USB for power and then a standard, uh, like a headphone jack. So this could be a receiver so for something, an audio receiver. So maybe you plug a piece into your home stereo and then you plug this in. I don't know. Is, there, some, a, is there a button or anything? There's one little button. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. There's, some, there's some text on here. Power and input. So useless. So this is an input. So this is a transmitter. This is a wireless transmitter. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember anything about it, but it's been how many years since you've opened this stuff? Oh, yeah, so it's, here's a disc. Let's see what we got in here. It's a CD for those of you who don't remember. Um, Cyberlink, uh, power DV. Oh yeah, yeah. So this is a this is one of those discs that come with a, a CD drive when you buy it. Free software inside. It turns out all of it's like crap. It's trial, unlock, doesn't do the whole thing. Why I got this? But this, now this is cool. Look at this. So this is a Back to the Future. Uh, that, that's a, a, a piece of a negative right there. So right in there, you, can, you can't really see it. I got light behind it so I can see. That's the DeLorean from Back to the Future. And it's got some, uh, some like fog behind it. So it must have been just after it. it, uh, it tell oh, it's right here. It's the same picture that's up here. Okay, I didn't make that connection. So this says, um, this limited edition Back to the Future Cenotype. Cenotype. What is that? Like Cenobots from uh, from Hellraiser? Exclusively created for Blockbuster, was produced from a single frame of motion picture film and includes one 35 millimeter frame of corresponding film footage. Image was digitally scanned and expertly reproduced. Oh, so it's not even real film. I mean, it's real film, but it's not like a movie. It's not the original. Not the original. The film footage, natural 35 millimeter frame, blah, blah, blah. That's still pretty cool, though. I mean, that's kind of neat. And um, it says Blockbuster, so this must have been something from uh, Blockbuster Video. Yeah, that's when you used to have to go somewhere to a brick-and-mortar store and rent movies and games. Number. So Blockbuster exclusive, forty-seven seventeen. I bet this is worth nothing. If it was the original piece, a lot of money. Perhaps. Here's another standard power plug. Cable. Oh, it's a mouse. Why do I have this in here? What is this? An AST mouse. It's wired. Why do we need a wired mouse? It's a wired for? mouse. You know what it is though? Back in the back in the day you could never have enough mice because you'd have one that would break. I need a replacement mouse, it would be 30 bucks. So you started collecting a little button in here? No. So you started collecting these things. 3D what does the 3D mean? Well look, it's in 3D. 3D <laughs> optical mouse. I don't know why that's screw. I thought it was a two-dimensional mouse. Uh, so this is uh, oh. Oh. Well, hey, this is cool. So this is a home run power supply. This is for an HD home run. These are, um, the HD home runs are digital tuners. These are pretty cool. I've got one in the other room. So um, the home run device, you plug in an, an over-the-air uh, uh, antenna, and it will pull in live digital television signals, and then any device on your network can watch live TV. And you can even, if you have the right stuff, you can go to a hotel room or across, the, across town or across the world, and you can stream your own live TV Right? So if you want to watch your own local news in your hometown or whatever, you can do that. Pretty cool. That's neat. I don't know why I have this here when I've got the thing plugged in over there, but I must have had another one at some point. In case it broke. Now, this is cool. Check this out. So it says Sansa on it. This is a cable. Can you see that? This is a USB cable. It's a data and charging cable for a Sansa media player. So before everybody played music on their phones, they had these things called MP3 players. They were little portable devices. You would take to the gym, you take to the beach, you put all your music on it, and you could listen to music and not uh, and be able to talk on the phone at the same time. How about that? Anyway, um, they chose a very weird cable, a very weird plug for this. So these are in sort of a high demand for those people who still have Sansa music players. They were pretty popular. They were fairly inexpensive, and they uh, they did the job very very well. If you didn't want to buy an iPod, you didn't want to buy a Zune, Sansa was the next thing on the list. So kind of cool, neat little piece of history there. Bungie cord. 
the life life revolves around the bungee cord piece and whatever. All right, so what we have here is the 8-bitty iArcade controller. This is pretty cool. This is um, these are neat because they're they're basically sort of fashioned over uh, an old NES, uh, you know, Nintendo controller. Extra couple of buttons, remarkably decent D-pad, start and stop buttons, a couple shoulder buttons. So this was like uh, this was um, a Bluetooth device if I remember correctly, and you could pair this to an Android, uh, an iPod, an iPhone, uh, a tablet, right? So you could actually play your old emulated games with this thing. It's really a, it's a neat controller. It's very comfortable, a little boxy, but it's cool. A little worship the wood grain on the side, for those of you who remember uh, the Atari 2600 had that. So the buttons aren't arranged in a diamond pattern? No, it's kind of interesting, then? right? Now remember the old NES button, the old NES controller just had two buttons side by side, so they just copied that design, I guess. Hmm. Not in a triangle type design or a diamond design. Pretty neat, pretty neat little controllers. They use regular batteries, no weird charging ports or anything. Just very utilitarian, but very useful. That's why it's so useful that it's stored in a box. Now what do we got here? Uh, cables. Yeah, micro USB cable. Hey, now this is cool though. This is um, this is actually kind of neat. This is a um, this plug fits a PlayStation Portable, PSP. And I don't know why this particular cable had two plugs. Well, I know why. Because this was the this was the USB cable of the day. This is a mini USB, not a micro USB, not a USB-C, but a mini USB. This was very popular. This is what all the phones use. This is what uh, tons of devices use. So, or this was used as a data cable. So um, this was the power to the PSP. And then on the top of the PSP was one of these ports. You plug this into your computer, you could transfer pictures and stuff over to it. So a, a great little utility cable for the PlayStation Portable. This, I'm pretty sure, is the... This looks... Well, I know what it is. It's a, you know, it's a strap, a lanyard. But I think this was to one of my very first, if not my first, digital camera. So I kept it. Kind of cool. Uh, useless to some, important to others. Uh, this is cool. So, um, if you've seen the movie Labyrinth with David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly, you probably probably know why I bought this. This was a, um, in the movie of Labyrinth, for those of you who haven't seen it, there is, David Bowie plays the Goblin King, and when he's talking to Sarah, played by Jennifer Connelly, he, he does this bit with the ball, and this ball is like traveling all over his hand. It looks like CG. I mean, it looks so crazy like who could pull that off but he does this bit with the ball and he rolls it between his fingers and all this stuff now david bowie's not doing it of course there's some guy like behind david bowie and he's got his arms underneath his arm thing and he's doing it without even being able to see it if you look on the dvd or the blu-ray uh, the special features they show the guy uh they called him like the um the globe master or something like that or ball master which that's a terrible name but anyway but uh this is glass this is this is actually glass not some cheap plastic it was nice and heavy um, so I thought, of course, that I could probably learn how to do that. I was wrong. But it's still pretty cool. It's a neat little neat little showpiece. It feels good in the hand, too. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I thought that was kind of fun. What else we got in here? Uh, external SATA cable for external SATA drives. Like, I've, ever, I've never, ever seen an external SATA drive, so I have no clue why I've got this. There's another light-on, light-on adapter. Once again, I, you know, why don't they put the name of the device that these things put? I know why they don't put the name on, because they're generic and they reuse them for a hundred different devices. But wouldn't it be nice to have the name on these things? We're talking about a zombie apocalypse, there's going to be a cable apocalypse. Cable? If you look, more cables. Oh, here, hey, here's another one of these. This is another one of those um, PlayStation portable utility cables like this one. Same thing. These were all the rage. You needed one. Oh, look at this. It's the Wii U fitness thing. So this was supposed to be like, so the Wii and the Wii U was supposed to be these consoles for like regular people, right? The Wii sold like a gajillion million units, but you know who bought that? Soccer moms, dads who wanted to play golf. The Wii was crazy. It sold video games to non-video game people. The Wii U, I think, tried to extend that whole Wii fitness thing. And so they made this little pedometer and I, Seriously, doubt if it'll power on or anything. No, but it's got a little LED display. And then, then you would go back to your Wii U and you would transmit through this, this infrared port. You'd transfer your steps into the, into the uh, console and it would like track your steps and tell you how healthy you are. But 
kind of interesting little neat piece of history. Oh, haven't seen that in a while. Uh, these are one of your old piece, old headsets, right? Yeah, that's why I, it's in a shed. Yeah, because it probably sucks. Oh, it's really uncomfortable. Yeah. Put it on, I guarantee you won't like it. Yeah, let's see here. Gets really uncomfortable after a while. I don't know, I felt worse. Oh, yeah, for sure, but after a few minutes, it starts to... USB, nothing special going on here, just a... Just a set of headphones, Sen Sente, S-E-N-T-E-Y. You know it's bad if you don't even recognize the headphone oh, brand. Isn't it? Oh, jeez. So, okay, so you have to be a super mega geek to know even close to what this is. This is, this is used for creating Ethernet cables, like this guy, right? So this is your standard Ethernet cable. You plug your computer into it, you plug it into your router, right? Well... If you were a technician that worked for a big IT company, you didn't buy cables that were pre-made. You would buy spools of this wire and a bunch of these little tips, and you would make these wires to fit. Plus, if you were only going to go from this, from over here to over here, you didn't need all of this cable. You needed like this much cable. So you would take the cable, you'd cut it, you'd get one of these little plugs. You'd line all the little wires up. You'd strip them. It's got a little stripper thing in here. Stripper. Um, you cut it, and then you put the little plug on it, and then the plug fits in here, and then you crimp it, and it crimps all the plastic down. Ah, oh, oops. Maybe. Fortunately, there's a, I think there's a release down here or something. Yeah. Release this way. Hang on. It's been a while since I've done this. Uh -oh. We'll just have a blooper reel and come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, that's the idea, though. So you crimp the whole thing on it and... Um... Uh, I think... Ah, there we go. There. You crimped this, it too this much. Was, this, was already, this little tab is already broken up. <laughs> sure. Anyway, so, so listen, this is like a rite of passage. You know, some uh, some kids carry knives. If you're an IT geek, you carried one of these. All right, so back in the day, you kids from the 80s know what I'm talking Just go into a street fight with a crimper. Okay, so we got uh, another Ethernet, more Ethernet cables. This really is the box of cables. Uh, micro USB. Oh, this is kind of fun, though. This is um, an actual Amazon, an Amazon power supply. I'm guessing, based on the plug and the age, I'm sure this was for a Kindle. Yeah, not even a full amp out. So. We have had a lot of Kindles. Yeah, we have. Here's another... Plug. Power supply with no clue what it is. More SATA cables. Micro USB cable. Well, there had to be one container that was boring. And unfortunately, we got to it in the second video. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, here's a little, you and my, uh, little headphone extender. And Another keyboard. Well, it's a Dell. It's a not Dell bad. keyboard. It's, um, these are actually, actually fairly nice keyboards. I mean... So there's nothing really special about them. They don't have any media keys or anything special, but these are solid workhorse keyboards. These are the kind of keyboards that the companies, like companies, when they buy large amounts of computers, they'll throw these in. It's actually a remarkably decent keyboard, and it's sort of thin form factor. It doesn't have a lot of bezel around it. So it's kind of fun. It's just, um, it's just a good utility keyboard. So you can never have too many keyboards, apparently. Nope. Okay, what do we got here? So another, so many, ah, so many cables. Oh, this is fun, though. Hey, look at this. So these, boy, this could go into some discussion here. These are RFID tags. And you can't really see through them, but if you could see through them, um, there's a whole bunch of wires in there. It, it, there's, there's stuff on this little, this looks like a little sticker, right? This looks like, I got a bunch of these in here. I'll just take it off. So this little sticker, oh, there you can see it on the back. Okay, cool, here. Whoa, here that's... So what this is... This is a programmable little tiny tag that uses NFC technology, which your phone uses too. You know when you go to the, the store and you pay with your phone and you swipe your phone, it uses NFC technology. This sort of uses a transfer technology, and you can store just a little tiny bit of data on here. Not much, just a little bit. And then you can retrieve it. So what people were using this for is if you own any Amiibos or Skylanders, remember Skylanders? They all had these same sort of things on the inside and they were programmed with a certain little tiny bits of data on it. So if you have like a bus pass, like if you have a Phoenix bus pass for our downtown Phoenix area, your card actually has this little device inside of it. 
And um, like I said, it only hold, it holds like your, your uh, user ID or something. But I got these thinking that I was going to have a whole bunch of fun programming RFID tags because you can have enough for like a web page on here, right? So imagine instead of handing somebody a business card, people still had business cards and whatever. Now you just give them your email address. But imagine being able to give them a business card that had one of these stuck to it, right? And you give them the business card and then they could just scan it with their phone and it would take them to your website or something cool like that. So... Interesting little bits of technology. Um, people also use these sometimes as uh, locator tags too. So a whole bunch of different things you could use it for. Interesting little piece of, interesting piece of history and technology. Just some of the weird stuff I got into for a while. Cables, cables, bloody cables. Well, this is kind of fun. You know, most people don't know, see too much of this stuff anymore. This is a coaxial cable. So this has this weird little... It's very phallic, isn't it? It looks weird. like something you would inject. It does. It looks like something that, you know. Uh, so, so anyway, there's this little copper cable in here that does all the work, and it's surrounded by this shielded stuff. And so this is um, this is what you use to put your cable mo hook your cable modem up, right? Same cable. But before cable modems and before internet and all that other technology, these were used uh, pretty standard for... Um, uh, your cable TV box. This was used for even your Nintendo Entertainment System. You you would screw this onto the little RF modulator thing, and then this would go in the back of your TV. Oh, but it does look very looks very violent and visceral. You do terrible things with that. Uh, Nintendo 3DS. This doesn't look like a 3DS. It lo that looks like it's too big for a 3DS. So here we go. So um, let's see what we got in here. Um, some padding, right? So that would you'd put your 3DS in here, and then it would push down on it when it was closed, and then you had some room for your game cartridges. Pretty nothing, standard. Nothing, yeah. nothing big. It's weird, though, because I remember the 3DS is a little more like this, and this feels more square. It's the it's same like the width. Yeah. It's kind of cool, though. I like, I, like the little, I like the little zipper thing has 3DS. Oh, on maybe thing. it's in, if you want to take a charger for it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I don't even know why I got that in here. What's this? Mm hmm Oh, Shane Armand Rowe Retro Gaming Radio. Fan mail? Maybe. This is from uh, this is from the Royal Mail. So this is probably UK, probably from the United Kingdom. Are we going to be invited to brunch? That'd be awesome. Invited to high tea, perhaps. Nah, we'd be uh, crushed. I need high tea. So let's see what we got here. Merry Christmas. It's a uh, Christmas card. And um, this very much looks like the old Psygnosis stuff. It looks like the artwork from the old Psygnosis games. Um, let's take a look. Oh, look at that. There's a disc in here. It's a music disc. Cool. Music. <laughs> yeah, so it says, uh, Best wishes for Christmas in the new year from, uh, what's his name on the back? Rodney Matthews from Yendor Matthews. So, hmm, hmm. this must be somebody that listened to my show or something from Retro Gaming Radio. But this looks like doesn't this this looks like old psychosis stuff you wouldn't know but I mean my listeners my my viewers might yeah know. it looks like old psychosis it's very stuff. cool okay, shut up it's <laughs> like old psychosis stuff but that's pretty cool and I'm assuming this is this that is cool too it looks like an eraser but does, I'm supposing does, it's not it's it looks oh. like an eraser it's plastic though it looks like a wolf or something right it looks like, like kind of like one of those Chinese dragons it does actually doesn't it? it's kind of looks it's got the same sort of graphic design though I can see from the scene that this comes apart though. Oh, it's and a it's USB? A, it's probably, it's, it looks like a little USB drive. It makes me, A, wonder what's on it, and two, how big it is. But it's not very big. But I, I wonder if it's got this music on it. I wonder if he sent me a disc because he knows I like physical media, and then they sent me a digital copy in here. I have to hook this up and try it out. That's neat. How oh, very fun. That's a neat little treat to play. Queen's out. got some weird tastes. Oh, these look like standard old speakers here. Do those go into Donkey Kong's bongo drums or something? <laughs> Looks like it. It does look like little bongos, but that's because they're taped together. They're zip tied together. Uh, oh, this is uh, Alltech Lansing. So I think at one point, these are nice. These are powered. These look like actually decent speakers. I must have used this for a computer at one point. I must have used this like for the uh, CD32 or something. And it's got the, it's got the whole bit. This is... I should probably plug these in and try them out. Um, forgot that they had those back there. Nice little set of speakers. That's fun. Cables. Oh my God! There's endless cables. Is there anything interesting in here? Or is it all the same old crap? It's like Sega the cable. This looks different. Let's deal with this. Hmm. What is this? Uh, oh, Asus. Asus. So I bet this is a Chromebook adapter. Does it say anything on here? 
it looks no. like there's something connected on the top kind of right it here. does it, I, you know what i bet this comes apart and you use it for um i bet you can use it for in europe or something here let me see no it's not coming off hmm. it looks like it, it does but... i bet i bet this does come off if you give it enough force i bet this pops off and you can put like a european maybe there's something you have to take it off and yeah i don't know it's another power adapter is what that is no it's more cable collection is what it is you got here so another oh, drop all over. Well, that's just another cable let's see mini oh this is interesting what's this usb this is definitely some sort of an infrared transmitter of some sort or a receiver receiver maybe maybe it's like a this could be like a this could be like an ir blaster uh, something that sends out infrareds to like control your tv or something i it doesn't have any sort of labels on it weird kind of interesting i wonder if any of my viewers know what it is right in the comments cables uh, adapters nothing even interesting no, this one's really short what's this thing's deal maybe can it be unplugged it's it's charger 2016 this i don't know what that is crap oh hey, oh look it's the six million dollar man it's a it's a hallmark ornament i love some lee majors I used to get these little keepsake ones every year. Most of the time they had video game ones like Pac-Man and, and Tron and stuff. But I love some $6 million man. Um, I love the theme song. The intro is crazy. In fact, I made it my top intro. I did, the, I did top 25 TV intros of all time. And $6 million man got the top. Please say Greatest American Hero got It was on that number list. eight, I think. I have to go look at my list. It's on, I, I got it on Medium, I think. And mind if I say, I haven't seen very many episodes, but that doesn't look too much like him it doesn't look anything like maybe the ornament does so here um maybe. this uses the little pen batteries which make me crazy i hate those I like why at all. here's the little battery cover so i must have taken them off which is good so the batteries aren't actually in this guy good wow that's really good condition all things it looks cause... great i mean that's been in the box and it's been sealed up look at this this is pretty cool six million dollar man it's got him in the traditional red jumpsuit but you know what the red jumpsuit doesn't have this is this is a sort of a poor recreation, but it's cool. It's got a little circuit board. Everything right? else looks good except for the hair and the face. I guess the face. You know what? The face does kind of look like him. You got to look at it head on, but it does. It's like Lee Majors when he's really really young. But this suit is a little bit off. Listen, first world problems that my six million dollar man freaking ornament doesn't look right. But um, there's a little button here, and I'm sure it plays some of the theme song if we put the batteries in. So let's put the batteries in. Maybe this it is plays from most of 2015. it. 2015. Really? Yeah, they so made one that It's five late. years ago. It doesn't seem like I saw 2015. That was like last year, but it's not. It's oh, it's an 80s show. I figured they would have made it in the 80s. No, no, no. Well, this is too much tech for the 80s. This is like a 70s show, by the way. It's like 1970s. Oh, so really? Ready? So let's, uh, I'm assuming it's going to play something, so I'll get it closer so you guys can hear. Yeah. Where is that? Nice. A man, a man barely alive. alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild it. Yeah, it's awesome. Look at this. We have the technology. Dun, 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 dun. Make the world's first bionic man. This could be the... I can't believe how much of this intro there is. Like, and all the other ones that plays like two seconds. Steve Austin will be that man. This is great. Post for a cover up here. Episode. Better. Stronger. Faster. Nice. <laughs> Is it the whole thing? It's the whole thing! Wow. I, usually they only play like two sentences. Okay, so it cut off a little bit, but damn, that's really impressive. That's so neat. I don't know. I mean, I... I, I don't know. It seems more like a collectible thing. It's though. a collectible thing. It's never going on the tree. In fact, I can guarantee it's never going to go on the tree. So I'm going to take the batteries out. I'm going to wrap Mr. Austin back up. Mr. Lee Majors. I met him at a Comic-Con. Very nice guy. My, my mother was actually a big fan of his from when he played on uh, Big Valley, I think. That's even before my time. Six million dollar man. Six million dollar man. It, says, man. it even says right here, I'm a keeper. I wonder so, if it says that with all of them. It probably does. Let's see what it says on the back, just for fun, because this is for posterity. Let's see. Um, Gentlemen, we can be him better, stronger, faster. With these iconic words, injured astronaut Steve Austin became the six million dollar man in the popular 1970s television show. Lee Major stars as the world's first bionic man with two technologically advanced legs, an arm and an eye that gave him superhuman strength, speed, and vision, and made Majors a pop culture icon. In which he is. Every this is spoofed on Family Guy. You get every everyone knows six million dollar man. You know they made. Maybe there is some people who don't know. What's this? Um, Cables. 
More cables. Well, this is this is one of those weird splitters. This you keep stuff like this because it's so weird. So this you plug a headphone jack into, and it turns it into left and right RCA cables. You keep stuff like this. It's this Cisco valet connector. So this Cisco. looks like a well, Cisco's like a networking company. AM10. I have no idea what this is, but it's got a MAC address, so it's some sort of a wireless adapter. So this is like a wireless um a wireless uh, Wi-Fi adapter for USB. It's kind of fun. Cables. Cables. What else we got here? More cables. Hey, look, it's Pika. Pika, Pikachu. If I'm not mistaken, that's a McDonald's. So look at this. It's got a little ball on the bottom, so I'm assuming it's some sort of like a roller thing. So let's see if we can get him to I move think on. they released that in the 90s. It doesn't roll very well. Well, it could be rusted. It could probably be dirty. But anyway, gotta love Pikachu. <laughs> or not. Depends. Uh, that look, looks like... a night light or a little book light. The itty bitty book light. No, it's not itty bitty. It's mighty bright. Mighty bright. Uh, not intended for young children. Uses three AAA batteries. I wonder if oh. the batteries are still in here. There's the little power switches on the side. I remember oh. that. I used to use oh, that hey, for books. That. Still works. Huh. Bright light. Okay, so you can... Uh, different settings. Uh, two, one, and none. Nice. So you just clip it to your book. And... Um, light? Yeah, light. You could probably put this on like a, an old uh, Game Boy too. The old black and white or the green screen Game Boys that had no backlight. Yeah, there it it sucks in the dark pretty much. I can't believe how well that, that how that still works. That's pretty neat. It's been in storage for like a few years. Oh, oh my God! Look, look at this. What happened here? This is this is like an old 1970s. It looks a lot newer than that, but uh, this is like the old 70s uh, electrical cord. Basically, the entire house would catch fire the second you plug this in. Really? Sure. No, it, not really. But this was like really cheap wiring. This is this is more of a collector's piece than anything actually useful. Look, it's only two prongs, right? So so this is why this is here. <laughs> so funny. It's ridiculous. We we as a society are dying to do ourselves in because so the whole purpose of these three plugs. I know I saw one in here somewhere. You probably just use the one you were that was plugged into it. No, that's boring. I had. Where's that other cable at? It looks like all of them are two plugs. Dang it! Well, I almost had a. I almost had a good bit going here. Anyway, so there. Every, everybody. Everybody knows that a plug has two. You know, two, and then this little guy down here. So it's a three prong plug. And this was. This is a grounding plug. You're. You're supposed to have your appliances grounded. It's for safety. But somebody said, oh, well, you know, I've got this old." Uh, Got this old uh, thing and there's no third plug, there's no third hole. So what they do is they invent a device to circumvent the ground and then you can plug this in, no ground, and then plug whatever you want in here. Ridiculous. And here, see this one has, see this is what everybody, we all know the three prong plug. This is the way it is, three prong plug, three prong plug. This guy, you plug into your outlet so you can get six instead of two. I never understood why this was just... I think it's so you can, because... Out. That way you have to plug it into both of them. Yeah, but it's so goofball. I mean, so now instead, this is even worse than the extension cord. You got one plug taking all six of these. I don't know. But this had uh, this has a little nightlight thing. So if you plug this in and it gets dark, it will sense the light and it'll turn this little light on. So it's, it's put it in your hallway. I don't know why you need six plugs in your hallway. But I'm starting to get to the bottom here. Let's tilt this guy. Oh, there's some cool stuff in here. There's a rag that... We used to dust off. Okay. Um, oh, hey, this is cool. Speaking of two prongs, back in the 70s and 80s, I sound like Pat Oswalt on the Goldbergs. Back in the 80s, um, no, seriously, though, this was the universal plug. You know, we struggle a lot with all these cables and connectors and stuff like this. Somebody had a great idea. They said, everything is going to use this plug. And everything did. Boom boxes, electronics, appliances, everything used this little two plug adapter. And then suddenly they stopped. And I don't know why, probably because there's no ground on here is what I would guess, there's no grounding plug. But anyway, this this is a neat little piece of history. Um, like I said, if you had one of these, you could plug almost anything in back in the 70s and 80s. Is that cool? Yeah, before I get to the cool stuff, I'm gonna get through the rest of these cables. Cables. See, here's one right here. Just hadn't gotten deep enough. Yeah. This is probably what replaced that because this got used a lot, right? So where this one was the was the standard without a ground, this is the one that did have a ground. What I got here, USB extension cable, gold plated, mm, extra quality. Uh, more headphone adapter, 
SATA cable. I'm getting through all these cables. Dang it. Ethernet, SATA cable. 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 Getting all these cables out of the way. Then we're going to get to the good stuff at the end. Well, this is different. I don't know what that is. This looks like some sort of, It's a proprietary type of... I've seen this plug before, though. Is there anything on it? I don't know. Maybe one of my viewers knows what that is. There's another one. I got two of them. Man, I must have... What are these plug into? They look like little SATA cables. I wonder if they're the same thing. I honestly don't care that much. Let's keep going. There's more they're just cables. Here. They're cables. Cables. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so gross. So this is a... Uh, for the, Some of you might recognize this. This is the uh, ball out of a Logitech uh, trackball. I love trackballs in general. That's why I don't have carpal tunnel after 50 years of using computers. It's a little light thing. I, this is a backup. I've got tons of these things running around. Oop, thank you. Are we done with the cables? No. Cable. Ah, uh, we got some good stuff in here. We'll save some of the best stuff for last. So here is a... <laughs> I got these for Christmas presents one year. The elephant gift type stuff. These are... um. These are little Androids, and I think just open. Here we go. for all of you iPhone users. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's a little. I I love the cute little Android logo. I I've got tons of stuff with the Android. I got little Android keychains, little stuffed animals. I always liked the little icon. I always thought he was an interesting thing, and and it's a shame Google's kind of moved away from the whole little Android green robot. But anyway, so these are check this out. This is so cool. They are little card readers. So you can put a little micro SD card in here. And then it be, this is really, really efficient use of space too. And then here's the USB part. So you put your card in, plug it into your computer, and now you read your card. So you can always have a little card reader like on your keychain. It come loose very Yeah, well, I bet this easy. pops right off. I mean, at some point in time, this is probably rattling around in your pocket or whatever, and it comes off. But I don't know. I thought it was really cute. Obviously, I got them like, you know, it was like 10 for 20 bucks or something. They were cheap, but... You know, they're kind of an interesting little novelty piece. Obviously, I'm still talking about them all these years later. <laughs> this is a deadbolt. Why do I have it? I'm at a loss. Uh, For all of you who didn't see, it's it's a door part. It's a door bolt. Uh, USB power adapter. Oh, this is kind of fun. I um, I got a whole bunch of these from some cheap Chinese knockoff place. Um, it's a USB hub. It's a four-port hub. It's USB 3, so, I mean, I could still use this. It would still be valuable. Um, it's not powered or anything, though, so you could probably only get a couple of devices on here. But it's kind of a neat little design. You just pop it right in your pocket for a little, uh, little four-port USB hub. Kind of cool. Yeah. It's cute. And here, what's this? Oh, an HDMI switch box. Why is this in here? I could probably use this. So this is a standard, um, standard HDMI thing. So you, you plug... Uh, you plug three devices in, here's your Switch, here's your Xbox, here's your PlayStation, and then you output it all with one single cable that goes to your TV, plug some power in here, and then you can switch through. Some of these had a remote. Oh yeah, there's an IR port, so you could plug in, hey, maybe that's what that other thing was in here. No, it's wrong, wrong pin. So this is an IR port, right? So you didn't, every time you wanted to get up and change it back to the TV or back to the Xbox, you didn't want to come and push the button. How late? I mean, that's that's not convenient. So they have a little IR thing. You have a little remote. And so this would sit up by your TV, and this little thing would come out. And you could point at the TV, and it would change the things for you. So HDMI switch box. What's this? Verizon customer information about radio frequency Trash. emissions. So number one, and responsible driving. So number one, nobody drives responsibly. They're all on their damn phone. Two, radio frequency emissions. I am almost asleep and I haven't even opened this yet. I would like to know if anybody in my listening audience once has read this page. Just read the first sentence. Get a look. We get a look at this. Are wireless phones and devices safe? Wait, wait. Trash it. Scientific research on the subject of wireless. No, no. Oh, no. Okay. Just gone. What else we got in here? Hey, it's my S8 box. 64 gigabyte Galaxy S8 phone. Cool. You never know. You know, I keep all my boxes. And it's kind of a weird habit of mine. I think of it, I like, when I buy used equipment, I like to buy it with the box. I like to know that the, the person who's selling it to me cared enough about it to keep the box. 
I don't know, it's just a weird, weird thing. But sometimes you can find little treasures in these boxes that you forgot about. Uh, so let's see what we got in here. So much crap you can't even see. Ah, so here's the little adapters that come with it. These are cool. So this is a uh, USB-A to USB-C plug. This could be actually somewhat helpful. This is a neat plug. And then, um, yeah, so this is a mi mini U or micro USB to USB-C. So let's say you had a Galaxy 7, S7, which used micro USB, and your new phone, your S8, has USB-C. So if in order to move your files across, you'd plug this one into your new phone. You'd use a regular USB cable and plug that into your old phone, and you can transfer your stuff across. Oh, nice. Um, one of the thing, one of the selling points of Samsung phones is they uh, made a deal with these AKG guys. These guys make like decent, decent audio equipment. And so these are included earbuds, and these are like these are like 60, 70 bucks, I think, at the time when they came out. These were these are solid, solid earbuds, and I didn't even um, I didn't even open these. Actually, nowadays you can get them on Amazon for eight bucks, and they're still really great quality. And yeah, well, that's the considered. problem. Since every phone came with them, suddenly they're not worth as much because everybody's got them. But so. they're still really good headphones if you just want cheap pair of earbuds or something. So it was really nice. That was nice. So um, that's cool. That's a neat little find in there. Undiscovered treasures. Undiscovered treasures. There's a lot of junky cables in here, but um, yeah, you know, that's. That's an understatement. That's an understatement. So and the door part. Let's get some other little stuff out of the way. Here's a standard USB 2 hub. Totally, pretty much totally useless at this point. Join the junk. What's this? Bluetooth RX. Oh, look at this. It's a Bluetooth transmitter. Interesting. So, so um, this would be probably, so there's a mic thing in here, and this is probably for a wired mic, and... There's probably power here. This may have a little battery in it of some sort. But the idea here is, is that um, you get a microphone, like that little microphone that I had earlier, right? The little clip-on microphone. And you can put this in your pocket, run the cable down to it. And then you could pair it with Bluetooth to your computer. And you could have the audio being sent to your computer with no extra wires. That's kind of cool. I don't know what I ended up using this for. Probably didn't use it for anything. All right, there's a bunch of more small crap in here. Let's get these out of the way before we get to... There's one more thing in here that's going to be really cool to look at. Wow, it's so gross. And here is... Okay, can someone in the comments tell us what this is? But take a look at this. So this is a square plug, which is very unusual, with one little tiny pin in it. On the other side is a very, very strange plug. Uh, it does say plus and minus, so maybe this is power of some sort. So maybe so. There's a plus and a minus, two pins. So maybe this is some sort of a power cable. But this this yellow, the yellow piece looks, there's something in the back of my mind that's firing, but I have no clue what it is. So if you know, tell me what it is. Uh, here's your standard gender bender, right? So um, I had an RCA cable in here somewhere, but essentially uh, RCA in to RCA out. So basically, if you wanted to make an extension cable, you'd use that. Here's your standard universal power adapter type plug so you can change tips. And this is kind of cool. I mean, this isn't really anything old or, any, or anything unusual, but this is kind of cool. This is a cable manager. So like if you had a cable that you were plugging your phone into or something, so you could stick it through there, right? This then sticks into your phone, put this on your desk, right? And so when you sat down at your desk, you pull the cable up, plug your phone in, take your phone out. You can kind of thread it down so your cable's not all over the place. A little sticky bag. What is next? Uh, this is this is some sort of audio. This is either an audio receiver or a transmitter. Maybe this went to this other thing, that other thing I had. I don't know. Anyway, so this looks like it plugs into um, a computer or something, and you sync it or hook it up. Maybe some sort of power plug there. Anyway, there was an adapter here. I'm not sure why I had that on there. Interesting. No clue what that is. Interesting looking though, and then every now and then something weird shows up, like a like a tool piece that's in here. It's a little socket. Hmm. <laughs> X10 powerhouse. Back in the eighties, back in the eighties, X10 would sell you anything for home automation. They would sell you a security system where you put little little things on your windows and your doors, and uh, 
if anybody tried to break into your house, it would sound an alarm. It might even call the cops or call you. So this is a little arm and disarm for that. And then you could plug these little white boxes all over your house and plug lights into them and all that other stuff. And then you could turn the lights on and off. So this was a key fob. So you come home, you hit disarm, hit lights on, and then all your lights would turn on the house. So it's got some Fry's batteries and it. it's not that old. And let's see, speaking of remotes, here's a uh, Harbor Breeze. This is a ceiling fan. It's a ceiling fan remote. And these Harbor Breeze, quite the interesting deal. So if you look inside there, there's a whole bunch of um, little dip switches. So between those dip switches, what are there, four of them in there? On, off, two, three. So there's four switches. So what's the, com some of the math people can tell me, how many combinations can you make with four dip switches? That's like 16 or something, right? I don't know. Anyway, so depending on which of the Harbor Breeze uh, ceiling fans you have, you could program it to work on this. I think this is a backup. I've got ceiling fans all over the place, and um, they all have their own, so this is probably a backup. I don't know. <coughs> Clippers. What is that? What? Spiders need to treat their nails too, you know. Hey, look at this. This is my old instructor patch. So when I became a first-degree black belt instructor for Tung Sudo, this got uh, sewn onto my uniform. Very cool. So what happened? Did you get downgraded? No, I, I got upgraded. I became a second degree black belt. So this came off and I got one with two little white stripes on it. So I was a <laughs> second degree instructor. That's kind of cool. Neat to have old memento. And uh, we sort of had a habit in my um, in my studio. We'd pass these down. So when I became a second degree, um, I took my first degree off and I put my second degree on. And then the next person that got a black belt, somebody maybe I mentored or that was, that was somebody close to me, and they became a first degree instructor. I would give them mine. But I had, a, I had several different uniforms, so this probably came off of one of them. And, oh, this is cool. I forgot about this. This is a Back to the Future pin, right? So you could, it's like a, like a lapel pin. And um, there's a little, there's a little, uh, a battery goes in here, which I think I took the battery out, hopefully. Yeah, the battery's out, good. So um, you put a little battery in here. It's a little, one of those little, the little tiny batteries. And then when um, you put this back on, and you pushed it down far enough, it would engage the battery, and then you get a little flux capacitor, right? So the little flux capacitor would start fluxing. And so a little light show going on. That was kind of cool. I got it at a convention or something. But it says visit us at bttf.com, so either that's an official product or a really big fan site to have that um, thing. That's kind of neat. Little thing. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember this uh... knife. So, a little side story. So this knife, first of all, yeah, it's like dull as hell. So when my youngest daughter came to live with us, her mother and I divorced and she lived with her mother for a good number of years. When she was 14, it was sort of decided that she needed to come and spend some time with me. And she was a little on the unruly side and um, she had all sorts of uh, stuff on her when she came up and this knife was one of them. And she... I, it wasn't something that she should have had at the time, and so I, I confiscated it, as good parents do when their kids have things they're not supposed to have. And but I kept it, so someday maybe I would return it to her. But you we know. have to confiscate that for now, though. Unfortunately, no, you will not be confiscated. Oh, come on. All right, and then the last item in here. Ooh, probably the best one. And I'm saving this because this is a really cool piece of hardware, as I recall. This is the GPD. And I don't remember what that stands for. Uh, but the outside of the box assures me that it's 64 gigabytes. And uh, I'm pretty sure I remember what this is. This was supposed to be the ultimate handheld game console. And look, there it is. Is that a 3DS? You, you know what? You would be forgiven for saying this is a 3DS. If you look at this, this looks like a 3DS. You would believe it was a 3DS. Uh, but it's not. This is the great Chinese knockoff of the 3DS. Uh, and you can see the you can see a picture of it right here. This was supposed to do it all. This was supposed to play every classic game. It was supposed to play modern uh, games, Android games. It was supposed to do everything. Let's take a look at this. So here we are. Um, we look at the back here. We got some buttons, right? So your shoulder buttons, your uh, your uh, trigger buttons. So that you could tell this was sort of made to play like maybe a PlayStation One game. There's a micro USB card in there. I wonder how big that is. USB, I'm assuming to charge, and a mini HDMI out. That's interesting. You don't see mini very often. It looks like a headphone jack. <coughs> so much dust. Um, nothing around the sides or on the bottom. So let's open this guy up. 
Yeah, see, this looks really cool, right? This look, you saw this on the internet. It's like, I got to have me one of these. I mean, it's got everything. Look at this. It's got two, two analog controls. It's got a D-pad. Oh, not very good D-pad. It's kind of small. The buttons are kind of small too. But it's got four, four buttons. Uh, a back and a home, so you can tell it's based on Android. A start and select button. Volume up and down. Power. Uh, and this is, a, this is a standard Android switch applications button. And then there's like a little game pad on it. I have no clue what the, that is. Mm. But look at this. This is a nice big screen. It's all 16 by 9. Um, I don't know if this will turn on or not. We could try it. Um, I don't think it will. It probably won't. But um, Oh, and it's got uh, extra buttons here, too. Maybe for a split second it could turn on. And we can oh, the it. light came on. Oh, oh, oh. Let's Get over here. GPD, Gamepad Digital. That's what it stands for. Can we get the... Let's see if we can get some light on there. If you point it towards me. There we go. Legacy ROM. Okay, so it's got some sort of custom ROM on it. I must have dinked with this before. You want to move it? Well, yeah, the light was on it. Okay. And uh, so it's booting. That looks like an Android boot loop logo type scenario. There we go. Oh, it's, of course it's Android. Nice. Connect oh, your charger. Oh, oh, we don't have much time. Oh, 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 oh. What's that? How, what are we going to get? Uh, apps? Yeah, look at that. Atari 2600 Play emulators. Store, Play Store, C64. Play Store. Uh, uh, the Play Store. Um... No, I couldn't ah. sign in. Uh, yeah, so so it looks like I probably put a custom ROM on here so I could have something else with Android. Um, yeah, that's... Um, so is this the home... Where's the home button at? There we go. So yeah, so I put some sort of custom Android thing on. But look at that. I got PSP on there. I got uh, PC Engine. I've got MAME. Yeah, we might have to do like a whole breakout of this guy because this looks like a lot of fun. I, um, I, I played it for quite a while, as I recall. I don't remember putting on the custom ROM, but... What a neat little device. And I think this was more in the $160, $170 uh, range. But listen, if it'll play everything. And it's got nice controls and it's good quality build, which it seems to. What a neat little treat. That's a neat little device that a um, little sign from yesteryear. The GPD. How fun is that? Well, guys. Ew. <laughs> Trust me, it's empty. You don't want to see what's at the bottom of that. Uh... Don't look at the bottom of that. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed digging our second box out of Shane's shed. Uh, we found we found a handful of treasures. We found a whole lot of trash. We had a whole lot of cables, but we had a good time doing it. We got to tell some stories and have a little bit of fun together. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. We've got more boxes to dig and more treasures to find, and I hope you'll be joining us. So please, like this video, subscribe, hit the little bell, get the notifications when we're going to do another one of these, and uh, share this with your friends. I'm Shane R. Monroe with Monroe World, and we'll see you next time. Take care.